Hello YouTube, this is Rick Stivers with Young Martin's Reels, and today's project is going to be this uh, Shakespeare President 2 reel. Uh, it says it's 1980, I think it says H-O-B, but I'm not positive of that. Um, I'm going to do a little research and look that up, and if it's anything different, I'll post it on here. Um, very dirty little reel, but it looks to be in really good shape overall. Got some paint loss up here, but uh, it's functional. The anti-reverse is working on it. The drag is working. Let's see if we can loosen the drag. Yep, drag breaks loose. Can we tighten the drag back up? Mm, not so... Yeah. yeah, okay. That's pretty good drag. All right. Uh, free spool works. It's a little tight, but it works. It's already loose enough. It should be loose enough to spin okay. Um, overall, it looks like it works. So, let's get started on this. We're going to do a full servicing on it. Let's start off by removing the locking screw for the nut. That takes the screw off. That takes the locking nut off. And now we'll see about taking the uh, the nut off. Let's see if this looks like it'll fit. Yep, it will. Okay. And all right, we have a an E clip here. We're gonna see about taking that off. There's the E clip off. Let's sit that. Let's sit that over to the side, along with the handle. There is our tension screw. It's very dirty, but it's not bent. It's in good shape. So we'll clean that up. And I'm gonna take my wire brush to the threads on this just a little bit right here and see if we can clean these up a little bit to make that unscrew easier and not pack all that dirt down into the threads. Okay. Now let's go ahead and unscrew the star drag knob. It's very gummy. It is not just quickly turning on and off. There's a lot of old grease on there. All right. Yeah, it's very tacky feeling. All right, we've got that done. Now we're gonna loosen these three thumb screws See if we can unscrew them. And that comes off. And again, this is another reel that's missing the brakes. Okay, there's where the brakes would sit. And uh, it's actually bent slightly. Let's see if I can straighten that up just a little bit. Okay. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take that spool out. And, uh, yeah, it's got some old dried grease in it. But overall, it looks pretty good. That, this one's going to spring mounted on here. And, uh, that's. Aside from that, this all looks really good. It's just dirty. So we'll set that over to the side. And let's go ahead. And finish taking this apart. I'm going to take out these three screws. We're going to set the gear plate over to the side. All right. 
right, that screw, I'm pretty sure, fell off of this when we took that E-clip off. So we're going to set this with the E-clip. Okay. All three screws are off. Let's take the side plate off and have a look. Overall, it looks pretty nice. Dirty, but got old packed up grease, but that's all. Take out this screw and remove the gear. And I'm going to stick this screw right back in here. Just so that we know where it's at. Doesn't get lost. All right. On the bearing plate over here, we're going to go ahead and unscrew this. There we go. That removes it. Let's see what we've got here that we might be able to take off here. Okay, there's a seal. Alright, it looks like a leather seal. It goes in there. And there is a stainless steel washer that's keyed on the bottom. And on top is a Teflon washer. Okay, everything else that's in there is the bearing. And let's see if the bearing rotates okay. Yes. The bearing is turning smoothly, so we're going to clean that in place and uh, clean this up. Okay, let's see what we've got left here. All right, this is made like an Ambassador 5000 plate or worm gear. This slides up like this to get this off like that. And then, well, let's go ahead while we're thinking about it and unscrew the Paul cap. There we go. Take that off, and we should be able to get the Paul out now. Well, it doesn't want to come out. All right, that came out a little bit, I think. So let's go ahead and see if it'll come out now. Okay. Let's try to loosen it up a little bit. Got a little penetrating oil. We'll put that on there, and then we'll work this back and forth. See, what's going to happen when this paw gets to each end, it slightly turns. And if we let it go to the end and turn it like that, it will... Uh, move that paw back and forth in the hole and hopefully free it up a little bit. All right, now let's try to tap it out. Okay. There we go. There's our dirty, dirty paw. That's removed. Set it with the paw cap. And now we're going to be able to take the worm gear out and uh, definitely seem cleaner. Set that with that, and now this will most likely, yep, slide out, and it did, and we'll take the carrier off, and we'll take the worm gear tube out, like that. Don't lose these little plastic, see this little plastic insert? You do not want to lose that, okay? All right, and that's got that all the way apart and ready to scrub up. So we'll see about scrubbing that up. Let's move over now to the gear side and the pinion gear there for a second had fallen out of its location, but we'll put it back, all right? Now we've got two screws here to remove. And if this is anything, like an Ambassador 5000 or 
some of the Ambassador series anyway. Um, it will have a set of springs right here that will kind of push this up. It might not have them. Let's see what we got. No, totally different setup. Okay. Let's check our bearing before we set this off to the side for cleaning. Let's check our bearing. See if it's turning okay. And it is. So we'll go ahead and hit that with a little oil. And let's see if we can unscrew this. Yes, we can. Okay. And that looks like nothing is holding that bearing in like it is on the other side. There we go. It slid the bearing out. Let's set that over to the side. And that part is ready for scrub up. All right, let's see what we have here. Okay. All right. That turn. All right, that. That undoes the latch. Okay. Our pinion gear doesn't seem to want to uh, stand up on its own without the shaft of the uh, spool through it. But we're going to go ahead now and see if we can take this plastic sleeve off. And I believe that this is stacked up wrong. Any of these keyed? No, none of these are keyed. So that's just a shim, shim pack stacked one on top of the other in there. But there's no key for locking that to keep that from turning. Is the plastic, no, the plastic sleeve is not, yeah, it's keyed, so it can't rotate. Okay, so when you tighten down the drag knob on here, it's going to turn. There really should be at least one washer at the top of this to help when that drag knob is turning on there, I think. Let's see if these will fit through. Mm. No, nah, I think they're really tight. I think they do have to go underneath. Okay. That being the case, let's go ahead and lift the gear off. Let's take our dome washer off the top. And that looks really good underneath. We'll sit that up there. And this is our drag washer, and it does not appear that it's going to want to come out easily. Almost looks like somebody at one time or another put too large a drag washer in here. Either that or it's been squished out with too much pressure over the years. All right, there, I got it out. Um, I think I'm going to clean up the outside edge of this, but it appears that it's okay. It's definitely flattened a lot. Uh, and it's got rough edges along, and I'm going to have to clean those off so that it fits nicely down inside. All right. Here's the main gear. And again, it's got another drag washer underneath it. I don't want to tear up this drag washer because I'm pretty sure you won't be able to find another one. And it's functional the way it is. So I may have already spent all the time I'm going to work on it trying to get it out. As long as it will spin on here, it doesn't necessarily have to spin on the other side. It appears to be glued to it pretty good. So I think we're going to leave that alone. All right, let's see what we got here. This is our, okay, we 
We've got a drag washer underneath, a flat one. It's another domed washer. Okay. It's interesting that there's two, one on top and one on the bottom. Are they the same size? Yes. Okay. Our anti-reverse claw here is not grabbing anymore like it should. Let's set that over there. All right, let's see what we got in this guy here. Now he, his sleeve, oh, I just had that pinion fall out again. Let's set that over there. And, but this is the sleeve that the drag stack goes on. There should be a, um, yep. Yeah should be a washer right here. That's our shim washer that gives it its appropriate spacing. All right, and the rest of this is all riveted to the plate. I mean, you could take the springs off, but there's not really a lot of point in that. Um, so, this guy comes down like so. And when this cam here rotates, this one here, it pushes first one side in, then the other. And that trips you and resets you back to, it comes out of free spool. But this is very dirty. I'll tell you what this is reminiscent of. I knew there was something. This reminded me of something. Uh, it reminds me of the round plate that was in the damn quick uh, 700B, I think it was, that I did. And uh, I took a lot of this stuff apart on that. And that was a mistake because I like to never got that spring back in right there. Um, so I'm, I'm going to tell you, do not take that out. You can, but I'm going to say you don't because I'm not ever going to take one out again. It took me a long, long time to get that to go back in. All right, and there's no plastic parts on this. So I'm going to take off this shim so that I don't lose it in the parts cleaner. And then... We're going to fire it up, the parts cleaner. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn it on right now. All right, it looks appears that all the uh, scrubbing and cleaning is done now. We're ready to put this side plate back together. And we're going to start off by, remember the screw that I snug back up. All right, we're going to take it off. And... We're going to put a little oil in the threads of that just because it feels a little tight and put some on the shaft and set this plastic gear back on here. There we go. It turns freely. Let's put the screw back in. Now when it's tight, yep. It should be able to turn freely, and it does. Okay, we're going to flip this back over now. And we're going to give this bearing a shot of oil. And now we've got this... Um, um, leather seal that they have inside here. It's kind of an oil seal, I believe. That goes in next. Followed by this stainless steel seal and this Teflon, like so. With all that done, we can go ahead and screw this cap back on. And when you go to put it on, see this spring? That spring has to sit into this um, notch on the side when we get it to go. So we might have to get it started and then get it in the notch. Definitely has to go in a notch first. All right. Then once it gets tightened down, that actually becomes the pointer for your uh, your tension on the side. Okay, we're not going to screw it all the way down. We're going to leave it loose for assembly. That takes care of that side case. Then we've got this guy all cleaned up now. And I went ahead and I greased everything while I was cleaning 
So I've got a little coat of grease on everything here, up in everything, up underneath. I've activated it a few times, made sure I've got grease up underneath everything, like up in here and up in here. And uh, then we'll take, activate the trip levers and that deactivates it there. And we are ready to put this shim washer on. Okay. Slide that all the way down to the bottom. All right, now here is where things become a little less happy. All right. Well, not quite yet, but we're very close to that point. Okay, we're going to put oil on this shaft. And some people grease that. That's okay. It's not going to hurt to grease it. But we're going to put oil on it simply because when you take this, this cap off and open it up, it opens to right here, and that's where you put oil. So oil is the basic thing that belongs in there. Okay, here's where things are not happy. Okay, and when I clean this, I found that it is missing one and a half teeth off the anti-reverse. And, and um, that makes me unhappy. That means that this reel is going to end up selling as a um, parts reel. I'm going to finish putting it all back together, but it's going to have that skip and anti-reverse. And Ken is unwilling to sell it as a good reel. He knows that that's there, and he's going to sell it as a, as a uh, parts reel. He'll still get good, decent money for it because there's hardly any of these out there. But, okay, now this is our anti-reverse. And if you look, you'll see that as it rotates, we'll, we'll go ahead and put it on, and I'll show you. Okay, let's drop this down onto here, and let's get that anti-reverse pin right there. Let's blow this up for a second. Okay, that pin has got to drop on, or lever has got to drop over that pin. Okay, now what happens when this turns, the wall of the reel is going to be here, so this can't, if you just don't have the wall there, then when you do this, it's going to uh, pop out and off. But as long as the wall of the reel, that's this wall, Okay, as long as it's in place, it won't be able to pop out like that. Now, what will happen, we get to this point right here, and we go to backpedal, it's going to skip that one skip and most likely catch in the second one. Okay, well, Ken doesn't like that. Neither do I. There's not anything we can do about that short of replacing the part, and we don't have a part to put in there. Okay, so, wanted you guys to know that, see it. Um... Ken will be selling this reel out there, but uh, it will be sold as a parts reel. All right. Now we've got our pinion gear, and let's go ahead and put some grease on the pinion. Aside from that, the reel's still going to function beautifully. It's just every now and then, on anti-reverse, it's going to skip. Okay, we're going to slip this in to the uh, yoke. Well, let's go ahead. I think I might have to... Push, yeah, I had to push it forward to get it to go up. Then, while it's up, I've got to hold this in place and rotate this. And that will trip. And that will bring this back down. Like that. With the pinion in place. There we go. Now, that pinion is all wobbling all over the place right now because it doesn't have the... Um, spool shaft coming through it all right let's go ahead now and set this gear in place and let's go ahead and grease it Okay, now I already gently lubricated on this side, but let's go ahead and do it again. It's not going to hurt. Let's, uh, we're going to put a little bit of cow's dry grease on this side over here, and we'll rub that into that drag washer. Okay, and then we're going to come back and wipe about 95% of it off, like that. 
then we'll set it back in like this. And now on the top side, we also have to install the dry washer. So that one, I'll tell you, it appears that this is a hard phenolic dry washer. I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. I'll be back with you in just a minute. All right, I sanded the edge of that a little bit just to clean it up, and we're going to put that back on. I'm not going to add any grease or anything to that. We're going to install it just like that. Okay, and it got a little grease on the face of it. We're going to take that off. Okay. Oh, we're missing a piece. Sorry, guys. I'm going to lift this back up for a second. And we have to install this washer then goes on the gear and then goes on your other dome washer like so okay <clears throat> so far that all looks pretty good we're not going to be able to get that to stand up without putting the rest of it in okay so let's go ahead and set this in place and now we're not going to try to think probably that anti-reverse is sticking out a little bit over there okay push that in okay set this back in place and there it's going to fit down through the cover like that which should make this fit closed make sure that this lever is in the hole like so and we can put these two screws back in Now, we have got to make sure that that pinion's lined up like that when we go to put it on so that it can line up properly. But we're also going to need this bearing in place, but I'm not going to try to put that bearing in until after I get that installed. Let's go ahead and oil that bearing one more time, though. I did. All right. This looks good. We're going to slide on. This stack of washers. Followed up by this sleeve. And good. All right. We're going to set that over to the side because we don't want to do that, this the rest of this, until we get the uh, spool back in. All right. So we're going to come back to here now. Here's our case. And we've got our worm gear which we've cleaned up and it's going to slide into here and we've got this plastic sleeve that also has to go in and it's going to go in like so it fits in there we go like that now it's going to come in from this side over here and it has to go through this carrier assembly so it's going to slide in like this then the carrier is going to fit over the worm gear sleeve. Slide this down and it comes over. And now this end over here is going to fit up in this notched area like that. And before we do that, we've got to get this in right here. Okay, so pull it back out for just a second until we get that installed where it belongs. Let's slide it. Once we get it on, let's slide it up this way. That'll help hold it in place while we put the other end in. There we go. Now, that's installed. It's in the slot up here. And it moves freely back and forth. The next part to go in is going to be our worm gear. It's going to slide through. And it has to go into that black plastic sleeve that we had on the other side. Like that. And then we have... This assembly, which is going to slide in under here, fit through there, and lock back into place. And therein fits our worm gear. Now, we're going to put the pawl back in. And I'm going to do that using my pliers. And we want these two teeth right here 
to be facing fore and aft. I hang it out of the way, see if we can get this to focus. Yeah, those two teeth have to go fore and aft. And we'll slip that into the hole. We're going to get it down just a little bit, and then we're going to stop. We're going to add a drop of oil to the paw. Okay, then we want to turn this a little bit. There we go, like that, until that gets in the, into its place. And we go back and forth a little bit. That's good. Then we're going to come back and put this bearing cap on. Okay. We're going to make sure that it free travels all the way up one side and down the other. There we go. And then we're going to snug it up. Then we're going to put oil on the worm gear, rotate the paw carrier to the other side, and oil it again on the other side. And now we have a well-oiled worm gear. If you feel the need, you can add a drop of oil here and a drop of oil right here, and that will help that turn easily back and forth. All right. Now we're ready to put this side back on. We should be able to line up these holes with the screws. And I've got three screws that go back in here. Let's put them in. Okay, as so we turn this wheel, our worm gear should turn. And it does. We're going to install the spool now. And I'm going to put some oil on the shaft. We've already oiled the bearing a couple of times. And I'm going to put a little oil here. Uh, if you put grease on this, it's going to slow the reel down. And uh, I don't want to slow the reel down, so we're going to put oil there. So we're going to slip this in and get it to go into the hole. And then we've got to make sure that we don't have any of the line trapped. And we don't. Okay, and I'm going to loosen that a little more. There we go. All right, now, if you had the brakes... This is when the brakes would go on. The brakes are little round sleeves or cylinder sleeves that get slide on these, and they come out and act as a brake inside this brake drum right here. Okay, we don't have any brakes, so we're not putting any on. Okay, now we're going to slide the side on. Let's go ahead and oil here and lightly grease here where it's going to slide in and out of the pinion and then slide this in and make sure that it went through the pinion gear see down inside there it did let's go ahead snug up the screws a little bit we don't want to tighten them all the way yet we just want to snug them up and now we can put this bearing back in Like that. It's been oiled, oiled, and oiled again. So we don't need to add any more oil to it. Now we're going to put this cap back on. And now this one screws on all the way. Like that. This one on this side is the adjustment. This one over here just screws down. Now we're going to come back to this side and we're going to screw on the star drag. See how much easier it goes on with all that old nasty grease off of there? Okay. Now we're going to put on this tensioner. Like that. Slip on the handle. Now, under the handle goes, or over the handle, goes that washer and then this little clip right here. There we go. 
That's back on. Now, if you want to oil this center shaft, normally you would go ahead and take this cap off and give it a shot of oil right here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and work on cleaning this up just a little bit first. Okay. Snug that up. We should be able to tighten it to where the flat is exactly in line with that screw hole. And then... This locking plate will slip on like so and then we'll put this screw back in place this up a little bit there we go did I tighten these screws down I did not let's try the drag drags a little loose yep nice tight drag little bonus footage just in case um i also forgot to show you the anti-reverse uh does work but just every now and then it skips just a little bit on the back end when you hit that missing tooth right there it's missing right there see how much further that goes a little bit more and we're on so it's right there that's where we're missing the tooth right there and it's going to be that way every time it comes around to that point it's missing that tooth okay there you have the shakespeare presidential two no not presidential president two uh 1980 hb it's not hob it's hb um made in usa Real. That's the only part number. I don't see a part number on it anywhere. Hang on. Let me put this under the magnifier. Well, hey, let's do it this way. Is that a DF or an OF? I think it's a DF. Stand by and I'll tell you what DF means. Well, I went and researched the date codes, and model DF is for 1975. And that does not mean that that was the, necessarily the year that this reel was made. That's when this particular design model came out. It was in 1975. So they could have built it for 20 years, just exactly like this. But um, anyway, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Tell me what you didn't like about it. And for now, that's Rick Stivers with, with Young Martin's Reels signing out.